So this is day 27 on learning Cypress with JavaScript. But today we have a very common topic like locators. This is very important topic to find the element in any web page. Okay. And why this is required? I'll tell you a very simple example. Let's say, let's assume that uh, we have a particular uh, website. Okay. So, for example, not this, not this, not this, my bad. Let me open a website. Give me one minute. Let's assume you have to um, automate this web page, right? So, you want to, so the basic manual testing step is, you put the username, something like that. Let's say age, you will put something. Let's say phone number, you will be doing something. Selecting the city and then uh, putting describe yourself. And once you click on register me, right, it should say welcome user Nitesh, something like this. It's a manual step. But in automation, this all step will be performed by the machine itself or through your code itself. So for that, you have to identify this text box, right? This drop down, this text area, this button, so that you will be able to write some code to perform something, to perform something, right? So you have to identify the text, button, drop down, anything any element where you want to do something. So technically, these are called web elements. Okay, I'm repeating. This is called web elements. This text box, right? this drop down, this label or the message, right? whatever you see in a website is called web element. Okay, and any web page is um, you know, generally, it's like in the background, you have HTML code, okay? If you want to see the code behind it, you can right click in the website and say view page source. So this will give you the HTML code behind it or whatever code is written. Maybe there are some CSS involved. There may be some JavaScripting involved, right? But this will give you any website when you will do right click view page source, it will give you the whole HTML code client side script it will give you right. This is not server side scripts. These are client side. Why we say it client side because whoever is using in the web browser, they will be able to see this code right. There is nothing to hide. There is no not much sensitive data or you know, some secret data, it's not there. It's just HTML thing like text box and button and whatever element is there, okay? Now, how to locate this element? That is all about today's session. How to locate this, okay? How to locate any element, whichever you are able to see here, okay? Fine, guys. So, if you have used Selenium or Cypress, right, you must have learned it something, right? But we'll we'll talk in a very basic thing. In the next session, also we'll do some advanced stuff. Okay, how to do that? Basic thing is you just do right click and say inspect. When you do that, when you do that, it will show you this it will show you this the whole html code right elements tab is there which will show you the whole html code okay fine and uh, if you see here there is a head then body when i hover over my mouse here it is it is, you know, highlighting the whole page because body is the starting tag of the content, HTML, you know, web page content. 
Then if you see here, when I'm hovering over H1 registration, it is highlighting this. Then when I am going here, it is highlighting the label. When I am going down, it is highlighting this text box, right? And so on. So somewhere, if I want to find out this register me, right? So what you can do, you can click on this icon. See here, there is an arrow icon. Click here and come to the web page and come here and then click. So this will navigate me to a particular code, HTML code, and understand it, what it is. It's saying button, let me zoom it for you. So if you see here, it's saying me, just a minute. I don't want to showcase you this thing. Okay, so let's inspect it again. Inspect this button. So if you see here, it's saying button ID is equals to submit, on click is something. Then there is a text for that button, register me. Fine. So in Selenium and in Cypress or any automation tool, right? You have to identify the elements uniquely. Okay. So in Selenium, you write something like driver dot find element or something, right? Element, element, and then you write how you want to do it by. There are techniques. So when you write by dot, so there are different techniques. We'll talk about it. In Cypress, in Cypress, it is cy dot get. Okay, it's cy dot get. And then you write some technique again here also, right? Here also you write some technique. So I'm not going into, you know, syntax part of it. We are talking about how many locators are there, how to locate it, okay? So irrespective of what automation tool you are using, it is always good to use console. Here, see here, console window is also there. Console window is there. So here you can practice about whether I am finding the elements in the right way or not. Okay. Another way is you can do a control F here, here, here. I'm saying about this part. You can do control F here and here find by string selector X path. It is showing you a lot of options, right? So here you can write different things. Okay. So let's talk about the simplest way to find any element. So let's inspect it, this username. If I inspect this here, it is showing me that it is input type is equals to text, ID is equals to uname, fine. So this ID generally developers provide it so that you can identify the element uniquely or for their own development code also, they also want to identify it, right? So that they can, you know, fetch the data from the UI and put it into database. They also want to fetch these things, right? If there is a real world web, web application, whatever you will put and you will click on the register, it will go to the database. So they also want to fetch this, right? That's why they, they provide different things, right? So ID is one such unique thing. It may be unique. You have to check whether it is unique or not. You have to find it, whether it is unique or not, okay? So what you can do here is you can go to the console, and here you can write document, okay, dot get just a minute, get element by ID. It should be visible just a minute. Let me open it in different view here. Just a minute. So document dot 
get element by id see here it's showing you you the option in the console itself and in the bracket you can say in the single code union because that was the uh, id for this text box and hit enter so this if it will show you something right it is showing you that that particular element that it is able to identify it right and if i hover over it it is showing you. that means it's successful you are able to identify it okay so by id you can identify so id is one locator okay you are talking about called the locator so id if it is present you should use it now if there are multiple elements with the same id how to perform then what to do that we will talk later on as of now let's assume that this is unique one and in this page actually it's unique and if you will write you know you name or you do some mistake let's say uh unm you are writing it like this and if you hit enter it will show you null why because there is no web element in this web page with the id name unm okay this is one way another way is here here what you can do let me do this here so here you can find it that whether you name is present so copy this and put it here it is showing you it is it is present two times right but i will tell you about two things here one is called css selector also so id whenever you see id right you can put hash here hash is the shortcut for id okay so this is a kind of we say css select so if i hit enter now it is saying me one of one okay i'm repeating hash means id so what is the meaning of this selector the thing is you want to find out an element in this web page where id is uname so hash is the shortcut for id uname is the actual you know value of that id right so it's saying me one of one that means you are able to find the element uniquely okay so this is one way by id you can find out anything um what is the other way so id is clear to everyone if you have any question let me know one thing is id what else go to the console and you can learn it you, know? you can learn from here also so let me clear everything clear console and again write it document document dot get see here get element by class name get element by name get elements by tag name get elements by tag name ns some some other options are also possible okay so you can find the elements by class name also okay so if you know class attribute so let's find out whether class attribute so for example this registration right okay there is no class let me search now no class is present here but you can find out any uh, element through class also so let's open any other website so let me open test.techlib.in and let's assume that we want to identify um, this particular login button okay if i right click here and i'll inspect it right what is happening now i'm able to inspect this right so it's saying button class is equals to btn btn sm button there are a big class name right and if you think that 
This is the unique thing about this login button that it has a particular class name. What you can do is you can copy this. You can copy this and go to the console and say document dot get elements by class name in the bracket single code put this okay so it is showing me that yes there are elements see here which has same thing yes so it has it has so it's showing me that there is an element right it is highlighting me also right so this is one way and if you want to check here what you can do in the elements tab do control f and paste that part okay but 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 this is not the right way there are spaces in between right so put dots dot btn dot btn sm so this is all all class names in this particular website this is all like different class name for the same element right dot 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 see here we are able to identify this uniquely why i'm putting dot because when there is a class the shortcut is dot okay when there is id the shortcut is hash okay and this is this will be very helpful for you to create CSS selector. Okay. To create CSS selector. So, so CSS selector is another way to CSS selector is another way to identify the element. Okay. What else? If you go to the console. And this time, if we will write document, document dot get elements by name. So name is also attribute. If you have name, you can use it. Class name, we saw it. Tag name, yes. If you know that there is a particular tag in your website, so for example, button. Right, so it's saying there are five five buttons available in this website. Okay, there are five buttons available in this website, and uh, yeah, there are some other uh, buttons also available. Okay, we will go to our own website. Give me one minute, so that things will be more clear. This one, this one, yes. So if you see here, there are two buttons. One is this register me and another one is this withdraw money. Okay, both are buttons. So here, if I'll write get element document dot get element by tag name in the bracket, if I write button, it is showing me there are two HTML collection, right? So it's showing me that there are two. Uh, one is this withdraw. One is there where the ID of that button is withdraw, okay? It's showing you button hash withdraw. There is another button which has ID submit, right? You have to understand it, you know, this particular, and it's not difficult. It's very simple what it is saying. There is a button available. There are two buttons available. One button is there, which has the ID submit. Okay. There is another button available, which has the ID withdraw. How I am get I am get I get to know that there are, there are these are the IDs because hash is written. And if I inspect it, you will get to know. See here, when I inspect this, it is showing me there is a button which has ID withdraw. And if I inspect this. It will. It is saying me there is a button which has ID submit. Okay. Now, how to do it here? So, you if you want to identify this particular register me, what you can do is you can say here hash submit. See here, we are able to identify it. It will it will highlight two things. One, 
where it is present in the HTML code and it will highlight in the website also where it is present, right? So if I hit enter, it is showing me that it is registrable, okay? Fine, so you can identify the element by ID, by class name, by tag name, okay? By tag name also identify. You can identify by link text, okay? We'll talk about this. This is a pretty simple one. We'll talk about this uh, maybe in the next session. But link text is one. But what is link text? Link text is where there is an anchor element. You should have a basic knowledge about um, you know, um, HTML code. So here, if you see, um, this seems anchor element. Let's check this login button yes so whenever you see a as a tag name it's basically anchor element okay which is a kind of uh, link hyperlink we say right if you click here something will happen some other website a web page will open or something will happen okay see here this is called link text this login is basically link text so you can identify the web elements through its text also, if you are writing test automation code, okay? Fine. You can identify by partial link text also, partial link text. What is partial link text? If you know there is a particular web link, okay? There's a particular web uh, link and it's, it's a big link, let's say, you know, something like click on me, there is some button, right, or link, which has a big hyperlink text. So you can have some substring of it. So for example, login may have substring as L-O-G only, or G-I-N, or O-G-I-N, or anything, which is the part of this big string. So for example, if you have link, link text as this, you can have partial link text as just log. That is also fine. That is also good. You can use OGIN also. You can use uh, GIN also. It, it's up to you how many characters you want to use, right? But the basic fundamental to find an element is you have to find that uniquely, okay? What else? And the most talked about topic is XPath and CSS selector, both. Right? But what is XPath and what is CSS selector? That we will talk now. So XPath is address. You, It's an address. Address of uh, an element. Right? You can compare it with your house address. How, what happens in our house address? We give it something like this, right? If you are sending a parcel from one place to another place, how the postman or the postal department, um, you know, how they uh, decode it, right? How they decode it? They, they first see what is the country name you are providing. Let's say you are sending it to India, right? Then they check, okay, what is the city or the pin code? So for example, if you are sending it to Chennai, then they see that um, which area, right? So let's say MG road, okay? Then they see uh, street number or something, right? And house, flat, society, let's say society, society name. Then they see uh, what is the flat number? Right. It's usually you write the address in this way, right? And and the name, let's say the owner, owner or the recipient name. Okay. But see, this is decoding pattern. You write your address in a exactly opposite way. When you want to post a courier, what you do? You say it like this: uh, Rahim. You want to send it to Rahim, Mr. Rahim. Let's say, Mr. Rahim. Okay, address line one. 
flat number 203 comma society society or apartment anything right so you say apartment apartment uh, is ganga society something like this and then you say mg road and then you say chennai and then you say india something like this. this is a complete address right but this is the address which you are giving but postal department decodes it this in different way okay or any application which decodes the address it starts with bigger entity okay so it, it decodes it like okay india india because they want to post it in different cities right different countries so they go in this way they don't read the owner name first they don't care about what is the owner name. that will come at the last point right you cannot post anything just by the name right if you'll delete these things and you will say mr rahim just chain name right it will not it will not be delivered correct so this is the way so this is the address in the same way in the website also there is address in the website also if you want to find an element you can find it through address also okay so that is called x path that is called x path okay so how to find the x path of any element let's say i want to find the x path of this register me button so you can inspect this here and when you reach here you can right click in in this html code you can say copy and here if you see it will give you x path there are two x path one is copy x path one is copy full x path let's copy both so if i'll copy this and we will put it into the word part let's see what is happening here and i'll copy one more so that we'll see what is the difference between these two i'll right click and say copy full x path okay this one fine let's understand both things okay this is full x path full x path this is relative x path this is called relative x path Okay. This is called absolute X path also. Full or absolute X path. What is this? Let's decode it. So full X path, what it is saying? Hey, there is a HTML tag. This is the parent tag. And then slash means it's child. And there is a child element body. Then the child element there is another child of this body which is button and one means the first button okay first button if i'll copy this and if i'll go to the website again and i'll paste it here in the element control f and paste it here see here it is highlighting this this register me if i will make it two so if you see here it will highlight this withdraw button see it's highlighting it so this is very simple. What, it, what they are saying is there is HTML tag. Inside that, the child element is body. In the body, there is a child element button with the tag name. It is identifying basically by the, by the tag name, but it is giving you the path. Then bracket two means second button. Okay, it's like this. If you want to find register me, that is the first button. Here, if I'll go. Yes, I am able to identify this. So this is about absolute X path.